So problem right now is my garage is only a two car garage and I have three cars. It's kind of hard to juggle around everything. Um, I do have a load of parts everywhere. They're just kind of stuck everywhere. So also hard to work around with. But when we're working on the cars, I got to move all these cars out and bring that one in. Morning guys, it's, I don't even know what day it is because coronavirus got me uh, all messed up. I haven't had a haircut in like 60 days. So it's pretty bad, um, but we're still doing a lot of car stuff. I actually got a whole lot of uh, car parts just coming in. So we actually got new Glory Springs at the Civic. Um, the ones we bought from eBay, they're just kind of like test I guess to see how bad they would actually be at first I would say that they were actually pretty good but after like a couple of days they settled in and they started being a little harsher than I would want them to so we ended up getting some skunk 2 springs these are e-brick cables because when we swapped to the ITR hubs the cables we found were a little too short so these ones are off of an EM1SI that should fit the car properly and then we also have these rear trailing arm bushings the ones that were in the car were just falling apart and some new front wheel bearings to go with the front extended studs that i have not put in yet this is what we did in the last video we lowered it with those coilover sleeves drove it around for like three or four days wasn't quite happy with it so we're gonna change those back out um, we'll tackle one thing at a time so I'm gonna to try to so I'm gonna do the front axle first um, so I'm gonna do the springs wheel bearing and the front uh, extended studs the rears I've already done the extended studs so I don't need to go back to them again um, but I'd still actually have to take the whole spindle out just to do the rear trailing arm bushing because it's got to be pressed out all right, car is up in the air, safely on jack stands. For the Civic, I like to use the tranny position, right? I'm not sure if you can see where I'm pointing at, it's kind of bad. But just right on the tranny, um, put the jack there, that's a good spot for it. And then the rear, common Honda thing is to use the rear tow hook up here. All right, so this time it's gonna be the same as the last video. We're gonna take the shocks out. We're gonna change the spring. And also we're gonna be taking the spindle out. So we're gonna take undo this bolt and this bolt. Undo the CV axle, take the brakes off. And then this should pop off and then we're supposed to take it to the press and pop off the wheel bearing and also knock the studs out at the same time. All right, so brakes are removed. Um, basically, there's two 17s on the back. These two, um, I would really be careful with these. Use a number three Phillips. Um, I technically like to use one of these on a socket. It gives you a little bit more leverage. Um, make sure you're putting the right force onto the onto the bolt, and you probably won't strip it. And remove the brake lines up here. And then this all kind of hangs out. Alright, the tie rod and the lower ball joint, they're held in by a 17 mil castle nut. Uh, once you get the nut loose, um, 
I like to hammer on these points or gently tap the bottom of here and that'll break loose the joints. Now we're just missing the top one and the axle nut and this hub spindle is ready to come out. Alright, so this is what we're at. Hub is out. Upper control arm, 17mm nut. Ball joint's kind of hooped. Probably get a new one later. And we're going to take this out. Alright, so I press the... Okay, so I now I'm at the point where I press the bearing out. The inner race is stuck on the hub and the snap ring is also rusted into this part. Um, I saw a couple of videos on how to possibly take it out, so I'm going to try that method. What I'm going to do is take this half inch spanner. I'm going to make this edge really thin. And then I'm going to cut this part off. And then hopefully I can use it to dig into it and pop it out this way. Um, kind of like in a clawing motion, ripping it out. I saw it done on the video. I'm not sure how well it would actually work in real life. It looks like it's possible. It's just going to take a lot of grinding on this tool. And this one as well. Alright, sorry I didn't get this on film, but uh, it was kind of sketchy what I was trying to do. So I was trying to make sure it was safe first before I try it again. So basically, um, the C clip that was inside the hub, which is this thing right here, that was rusted in pretty good. And on the video, someone said to grind out one of your screwdrivers into a sharp tip like that. And then just kind of chisel in and go all the way around and it came out. I have to run out to get some new clips. Got an extra one just in case the other side's bad too. These are actually pretty expensive. Online they're like $14. Uh, luckily, or sort of unlucky, but anyways. Another store locally had it and it was 30 for, you know, this flimsy ring. That's kind of ridiculous, but yeah. Um, whatever, it's like we needed it, so. That's unfortunate. Um, so now I'm going to press the new bearing into the hub and then I'm going to press the spindle back into the bearing afterwards. Oh, I'm going to put the clip back on but yeah. So I'm going to clean up the groove of the spindle hub. So I'm going to clean up the hub a bit. Sorry, let's try this again. So I'm going to clean up the seat area of the of the hub so that the ring can hopefully sit a bit better in there and then press the bearing in throw some anti seize in the ring again put this ring in there then press the hub in I've already went ahead and pressed out all the old uh, studs and put in these extended ones um, the rears are already done, so these front ones were just, because they needed the spindle to come out, I just didn't bother doing them last time. Okay, new bearings pressed in. Alright, got my snap ring pliers. I want to make sure it's in there snug so you give it a, a light tap the hammer. So you just want to make sure that the snap ring is actually seated properly. So you just give it a tap. Alright, so that's good the way it is. Now I'm just going to press the spindle back in.
I'm gonna throw it back in the car and now do the other side. That's it. Okay, so back at the hub or spindle assembly, we're trying to get a we're gonna get this snap ring out. Um, I'm pretty sure this is gonna be way too tight for me to just pry out. Yeah, so stuck on there pretty good, mainly due to the rust over the years. So this isn't going to work, you're either going to break your plier or you're going to break the ears off of the snap ring. So, what the video suggested, and it worked last time, is that you get one of these. Yeah, so you just kind of make it to the tip end like that. And then... As long as you have it started like that. The rest of it should come. You just gotta be careful because there's a lot of tension here. It may or may not string out. Okay, so we have our ghetto press set up. Going to press this out. So it's going this way. You put the pusher on this side. So I should line up fairly straight. Just put the got something to pass. it comes. Just make sure we didn't damage the beat shield too much or dust shield. I mean I think it got flattened out a little bit here but I don't think it's a big deal. Alright. That's a new bearing. I don't think it matters which side it goes on. It's in there straight. Try to make sure you're very straight when you're trying to do this.
All right, so that's straight in this time. That's straight in, looking good. Just gonna bust the ring back on. Just gonna clean up the old ring a bit. Get in there. Now I got the hub, extended studs. Gonna press these in one by one. So this, um, this press, I actually bought it at our local store. It's a 10 ton press. It gets most of the things I need done. It's actually not too expensive. It's like 200, oh, it's $180 on sale. I'm pretty sure if you guys are watching from the US, something in Harbor Freight would be similar. And I mean, a 20 ton press that has a wider mouth would be better, but for most of the stuff we do in here, uh, this has served more times than not adequate amount of force that I needed to get things done. Most of the time working around a press is very scary. Um, you don't know where the uh, break points is sometimes maybe and then things like start flying everywhere. Um, it's always good to wear like a face shield or like, at least some kind of eye protection. I mean those are your biggest things you want to worry about. Together, ready to put it back onto the car. We're gonna do the front coilovers really quickly to swap these springs out for these skunk twos on those ones. And then everything gets reassembled and the front's done. Hub is back in, spindle back in, new spring put in. Pretty much ready to go on this side. Just gonna put the brakes on. We're good to go. All right, front's all done. Just going to the back for the springs. 